Right now we're in La Jolla. We're uh, just up from La Jolla Shores. It's actually one of the best spots I've ever had to work on. Uh, our field of research is genomics, which is basically just the study of uh, DNA. Uh, reading and writing DNA, our research is in two areas primarily. Human health, uh, uh, bringing the human genome to the clinic, and environmental sustainability, understanding how all the organisms on our planet function. So in the building they have a, we have a parking on the first level, a podium slab, and then they have a large lab wing on the uh, south side and there's an open courtyard and then there's three levels of office, conference room, uh, rooms. Basically. We're shooting right now for mid-October. Right now we're tracking really close to that. McCarthy had uh, been very highly recommended uh, uh, by our architects, uh, reputation of uh, building other buildings on the UCSD campus. It was very important to us to, to be able to build a team, uh, have that comfort of our architects and, and builders having worked together. Yeah, I would say it's a combination of, of one, our, our stepping up our lead efforts over that period of time. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but we have, a, we have a significant amount of lead APs within the company now compared to back in 2007. The other uh, big factor was our relationship. We had a really good relationship with ZGF at Soka. Um, they liked the way we worked and why they liked the way we worked through issues with them. Uh, we have a good flowing relationship. Basically, whenever there's a problem, we just pick up the phone and have a conversation. There's always a creative solution, whether it's from the design side or from the construction side. A lot of different elements are going to overlap each other. So right now, like I said before the schedule, we have a tall order in front of us. Part of the, the value engineering and the push on the dollars was also the push on the, the schedule. Um, so we have we have schedule concerns too, where we, the schedule just got compressed and pushed. So you know, if having a, a job like this with with a, a compressed budget and schedule is, uh, is challenging. Yeah, it is. Uh, the net zero aspect is very important, and sustainability is very important to this client. It's it's a huge focus of theirs, um, and the fact that it's net zero is, is a pretty significant thing. Uh, they're telling us it's the first net zero laboratory in the world. Laboratories are are usually very energy intensive facilities, um, so it's very significant to be net zero, which means they produce more. Uh, energy annually than they use annually. Another unique feature is the mix design. It's, uh, it's a very unique mix design. It has a uh, 30% fly ash in it. It's type 3 cement, 8,000 psi concrete with 30% fly ash. Again, you know, one of the goals is, is uh, environmental sustainability. The fly ash uh, in the concrete uh, increases the recycle content in, in the building. This is a very complicated job architecturally. It's got a lot of geometry. It's got a lot of, um, you know, uh, high restrictions. Just they're trying to max out everything. And so this has been, you know, there's no tolerance. So it was pretty challenging both uh, aesthetically and then also structurally because of the, uh, the fly ash. It's a cement replacement, it takes longer to come up to strength. I mean, I've done a couple other architectural concrete jobs, and this one was quite the challenge for us. And the other thing is the fly ash doesn't mix in real well, so it, it leaves kind of a, a little bit of a modeling effect. Uh, this is uh, the first building project uh, that uh, I've really followed right from the beginning, and it's, and it's just a wonderful feeling to be at the place that we are today. You know, this more experience here with architecturally exposed concrete, we have a huge amount of lessons learned on this job that we that certainly will be able to apply to some other projects. It's very exciting the science that they're going to be doing and it's it's going to be around for a long time and they could have some some more very significant scientific breakthroughs in the future with the DNA sequencing and the and the synthetic self-replicating cells, you know, who knows they could they could maybe eventually make a you know, you could custom order your own liver or your, or your own kidney mapped to your DNA and you go in and switch out your kidney like getting an oil change. I don't know.